a while back I picked up some walnut and uh, they're about an inch thick. And I've got a few of them sitting here waiting for the right project and I think today their day has come. I'll take a couple of these and head back into the shop. I ended up taking one pass through my planer just so it'll sit flat on the sled. It was rocking a little. I'm going to rip it into one inch strips. All right, now you want to make a beautiful walnut cutting board. This is the place you stop. Glue all these little buggers together and you got yourself a beautiful cutting board. Or, stay with me now, we can break all these with a sledgehammer and make a bowl. This is totally cathartic. You need a little shop therapy? Um, I'm gonna recommend this. On to the next step. I've got here is the bottom of a cardboard box. It's eight inches squared. And all I'm doing is lining the inside with packing tape. So we should have a nice little inexpensive mold. Original thought was that I was gonna glue these together in courses and then I was gonna plane those down. I was gonna do the whole thing with wood glue. I was just like, that sounds really tedious. Oh, there has to be a better way. Yeah, there is actually. It's called resin. And I'm going to pour directly into the mold. So what you got to do is you got to pour some in and then it actually pulls up. And so you have to kind of shift these around, otherwise it just kind of gets stuck in one place. It's like the bog of eternal stench in here. And for those of you wondering, yes, this is going to be a lot of resin. So the base, so far we are at 12 ounces, which isn't as much as I thought it was going to be. But filling this area in and making, you know, the bowl, that's where we're going to be using a lot of resin. Uh, from a visual perspective, not a lot has changed. It still looks very similar. All these pieces are now joined together with 12 ounces of resin. So all I'm going to do is use a little packing tape and build up my mold. Uh, considering the volume here, an eight and a half inch square, um, and quite a few inches in depth. It's got to take a lot of resin. So while I would say that I prefer working with um, a West Systems epoxy resin, uh, it tends to be much more expensive than a polyester resin. Um, the West Systems that I was using, I think it's $170 delivered to my house, whereas this is like $33 and I can pick it up down at the craft store. The downside is, is it smells like death and um, I don't like working with it as much. So it's cheaper and I'm gonna use a huge volume and at the end of the day, it's gonna look the best. So that's the one I'm gonna use. And now we're gonna add 30 drops of catalyst to each. 11, 12, 29, 30. We also want to make sure it is well mixed. If it is not well mixed, it will not work properly. So you want to mix each one of these for two minutes. So we now have 12 ounces of resin here ready to pour. Have I mentioned how much this stuff stinks? Open up a window, wear some lung protection. So after a while, polyester resin gets to this jelly-like phase where it's not really cured, but it's pretty well soft set. Um, and you can see here what that looks like. It's the best time to pour another layer. I don't have a plan. I don't know if anyone else knows that. It's building up a new layer. It's not going down into the old one. Uh, 
and hopefully I've made it lighter. But that's nowhere near enough, so I'm going to mix up another six ounces and get it on there fast here. All right, I'm going to try to use a very small amount of dye in each of these. Uh, I really want this to start getting lighter. I want this to get lighter and lighter and lighter as we go. What we're going to do is we're going to add this to the one we just poured and hopefully get a cool swirling effect, which is what we got on the rings. So just, just in the blue, we are at a total of, what, 24 ounces? We'll do at least one more pour of clear resin with no pigment in it. That will be the last pour. All right, so I've got one that is completely clear. And this other one here, I'm gonna just be adding a tiny little bit of blue to. And what I'm trying to get is a gradient. I'm trying to get darker blue on the base and lighter blue going up, up to sort of a swirly. And I'm just going to mix color. the last two together by pouring them at the same time. So I'm just going to pour these two. I'm going to pour these two at the same time and sort of mix it as it pours. blue and then just kind of swirl in the clear here again I care more about getting that cool gradient and just making it look like the atmosphere is sort of breaking up which is that effect that you get in the ring so this bowl blank is going to be four inches deep uh, which is honestly a lot of material to remove so I think I think we're going to call that good. I'll wait for that to finish curing. Pardon me, my throat is a little hoarse. Screamed myself hoarse in Disneyland. I took the family down to Disneyland and Universal. It's a good thing, but my voice is a little crazy. So I'm going to turn this into round. Honestly, I've never turned this much polyester resin before, so it's very brittle, and I hope it stays together. <laughs> resin is actually wearing away at my knuckle. It's like sandpaper on there. I uh, should have a nice exfoliated pinky knuckle by the end of this. If you want to add lightness to a bowl, you make the top wider than the bottom. It makes the bowl feel light and that's what we want. I've been toying with whether or not to leave these shards of wood sticking up um, and I keep going back and forth on it. I think they're going to just distract from the overall look of the bowl. And um, they're kind of pokey. The tool is super grabby in the uh, in the resin. It's really hard. So I'm going to be really careful and just try to hollow this out as best I can with my bowl gouge, and then do the finishing work with the carbide tools. we can 
fix with our 80 grit gouge, AKA sandpaper. So I'm just going through the grits here. Started at 120, working my way up, progressively finer and finer. I am currently at 400. <clears throat> the lion's share of the work is done at 120. The rest of the grits are just to get rid of the previous scratches. Now you could probably stop at 800 and be pretty happy with that. It's not a bad finish at all. But we're gonna break out the Micromesh and see if we can't go even Micromesh better. Micromesh has their own grit system. It starts at 1500 and goes through to 12,000. Uh, normally I would be wet sanding if it was just resin. Since I'm not using any liquid, um, these pads can actually melt if you push too hard. So it's a little lighter touch and uh, takes a little longer. We got up through around 3600 on their list, but then it was starting to burn on the rim. So I'm gonna jump over and hit it with some plastic polish. It also gives it a nice sheen. Real light pressure, let the compound do the work. No pushing. That is super cool looking. Okay, and uh, the only thing I have to do now is part this off and take some and take some pretty pictures. And I'm just using my donut chuck to clean up the very bottom of the bowl here. There we go, a little sanding, and we can be done. I'm calling this the secret wood bowl. I've also heard them called worthless wood or simply just wood and resin bowls. I'm not sure I've seen any that look exactly like this with the one inch squares of walnut and the blue resin though. And no major mistakes, no catches, no setbacks, no major issues. Uh, I will admit that my method for making the blank probably uh, used up a tad more resin than was necessary. I've seen other methods that do a better job of conserving the amount of resin that you're going to use. I will put a link in the description for a video that uses a different method that actually uses only a small amount of resin to achieve a very similar looking bowl. Uh, and that's by a gentleman named Brendan Stemp who is a wood turner down in Australia. The plus side is that I did get some really cool cutoffs from my circle cutting jig. So you might see these again in the future. I'm sorry about my voice, it is slowly coming back. Went on vacation, uh, went down to Disney Park, and I wanna say thank you to Angel Lee. Um, she is a cast member on the Silly Symphony Swings down at the California Adventure. You made my day, thank you very much. If you like this video, please share it. That actually would help me out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next time.